Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. You know, if you've ever been out in your boat in the hot sun, you know what a torture it can be. You feel like you're in an oven getting baked on, or if you get caught in a rainstorm, you get drenched, there's no way to get out of the rain, or maybe you're just looking for some extra places to put some rods. Well, I've got all three of those solutions covered for you today. Today, I'm finally gonna take on the task of building a soft top for my boat. I'm gonna walk you through every step of it. So make sure you stick around. You're not going to want to miss it. Hey everybody, Dave here for the Frugal Sportsman. I'm really excited today to be able to bring you this video. It's going to cover a lot of detail and it is a little long, but the thing of it is I don't want you to miss anything. Some of this can be a little daunting or a little difficult maybe in some people's minds, but that's why I want to take the time to walk you through every detail I possibly can. Because I want you to be successful in doing this type of a DIY project for yourself. Now speaking of DIY projects, if you haven't checked out my channel, please consider going over and checking out the, the page. I've got lots of DIY videos. All kinds of stuff to help you not only save money, but to help deepen your outdoor experience. So, with that out of the way, let's jump right into the build and I'll get you going. Okay, here's the boat we're going to be putting our top on. Uh, it's a 17 foot glass tron and uh, what I'm going to do is I wanted to uh, put this top on I wanted to extend all the way up there to where the hinges are right about up in here and I wanted to come back somewhere in here so I measured that out and it's about six feet long now what I decided to do I originally thought about putting a metal top on this frame but because of the added weight and higher center of gravity if I'm out in the ocean, I didn't want to do that, make the boat unstable in any way. So what I decided to do was use a soft top. And I'm going to use a Harbor Freight heavy-duty tarp for that. Uh, they're inexpensive, and by standardizing it, I can put a, a couple in the truck or on the boat, and if it rips, I can uh, just replace it in a few minutes. And so uh, the other thing is, if I take that top off while I'm trailering the boat, then um, uh, I don't have to worry about it ripping and I don't have to worry about the wind catching a hard top and you know making trailering difficult. So what I've decided to do is make the frame. It's going to be six foot approximately by six foot approximately. And then I have a way I'm going to fasten the tarp and I'll show you that a little later. Now um, for fastening spots, the reason I went with uh, a frame and a, and a soft top as opposed to just a bimini which would run about the same money is because bimini straps to fasten would have to be up there about midway in the windshield. That would be the, your, your aluminum rails. And then back here, you're going to wind up having a, a nylon strap that comes down there and in the front as well to keep it from moving back and forward. That strap would coming all the way back here is going to impede any fishing out the side of the boat. So I didn't want that. That's why I'm going to be placing the uh, mounts right here, right towards the end of the windshield on both sides, and forward of the windshield up in the front towards the bow. And what that's going to do is going to give me a completely stable frame, but it's going to leave this area and this area all open to fishing. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to figure out the size of our upper frame that's going to hold our tarp to give us the shade. So Let's jump in the shop and work on that right now. So for the frame, what I've done is I've gone down to my scrap yard and I've gotten this inch and a quarter tubing. It has a uh, semi-thin wall in it, so it's not going to be too heavy. And I am making this whole frame out of steel uh, because it's easier to weld and it's easier to work and uh, it's not that much more heavier than aluminum because I'm not putting a lot into it and it's super strong. Um, right here I started, I came in about a little over three feet, bent it, went down to six feet, bent it, three feet, and then I did the same thing on this side. So I have two matching sets. Now I left them a little long so I could move them in and out to find out exactly where the tarp fits best using the bungee ball straps that I have. And so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the tarp down on here, fasten a couple bungee balls, move this in now and then I will find the center here and cut it there and there and weld it together and that will be 
our top. Then from there, we can take our other dimensions for our supports. Now, I've already gone ahead and bent this on the tubing bender, which is right here. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you don't have to bend it. You can actually just butt them together and weld them. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways you can get around this. So let's get the tarp, and then we'll lay it out and find out the width dimensions, what we need, so we can um, set these and cut these. So here's the tarp that I got. It's a heavy-duty Harbor Freight. It's five and a half feet by seven and a half feet, and it is nine mil. All right, you can see it there. Um, so it's heavier than the standardized tarps, especially like the blue tarps uh, at Harbor Freight. So it should hold up fairly well. And again, they're they're really inexpensive. You could keep a couple in the boat or the truck if you had a problem you need to replace it quickly. So let's lay it out on the tarp, and we'll get our bungee straps too and uh, find out the dimension we need to uh, open this frame up and how where we need to cut it. So what I've done is I've laid the tarp out on top here and I've fastened two of these bungee balls, one here and one on that side. And uh, what I'm going to do, as you can see there, they're just about touching. The uh, tarp is just about touching. The reason I fastened them is I want to get an idea of how much I want to stretch these. I don't want it so loose it'll pop off. I don't want it it's so tight that it's going to have a hard time fastening. So what I'm going to do now is just with my foot push that out and that's going to be well right I'd say right about there looks like it's going to be a good tension. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the edge of the tarp here to the outside of the pipe and that is going to give me um, the dimension that I need so what I'll do is say this is three inches then I know five and a half plus uh, three and three on the other side another six is going to get make it exactly six foot to the outside and then I will be able to line them up measure across and cut make my cuts and my welds okay the dimension I came up with from the edge of the tarp to the outside of the pipe was three inches so before we go any farther I want to make sure that these the bends are square and what I've done here is I've just taken a two foot framing square and tacked a piece of 3 16th flat bar on the bottom here and that will allow me to put it right against the pipe like that that'll keep it right on the edge and then I can come down here and look and that has to go out a little bit so we'll bend that out and line it up until it's square. Then we'll put them together. So I've taken the two halves of the frame and I made the cuts here and here and then I've welded them together. I've just tack welded for now. Everything just gets tack welded until the end. Then what I've done is I've placed two bars across here or tubes and I've spaced them out so that they're about an inch and a half in here okay uh, the other thing I've done is I've notched them out as you can see over here wherever you want the tubes connecting you want them to be notched down that just takes a little time now what I'm going to do is for time's sake is I'm not going to show you how to do that but I'm going to put a link to a video of someone who does a good job showing you how to notch tubing the other thing is I have a tubing notcher that I use for straight and angled pieces and uh, I get that at Harbor Freight. It's real inexpensive. If you're not comfortable notching this way, you can always use one of them. And so now my next step is that after these have been tack welded in is we're going to put another one across here and another one across here. And those are going to be to secure the tarps. The tarps will go in not on the outside here, but in here. And the reason for that is I want to be able to weld cross bracing on these outside portions. And also on the back, I want to be able to put rocket launcher rod holders in there. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these pieces in and I'm going to show you how I notch them. So here's a tube that's been notched with the tubing notcher. And uh, it works out really well. I just use an inch and a quarter hole saw on the notcher and it does a good job. When I want this to go in, all it, it just goes like that 
and then the other side is notched as well. But you can see it gives a nice tight joint for when you're welding. Okay? It makes it a lot sturdier, and it's less to fill in when you weld. When I come to the other side, what I do is I lay it on top, and I place, uh, draw a line here, so right to where this edge is, and then I bring the hole saw to that, and then that gives me a really nice fit, just like that. So let's jump over to the uh, tubing notcher. I've got one more to do, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here's the tubing notcher that I got from Harbor Freight. It's pretty inexpensive, and it does a pretty good job. Uh, all I do is I clamp it down to my table like this. On the side here, it has different degrees. So if you want to, you know, cut a, where a tube meets at 45 degrees, you could do that, or 15, or whatever it is you want. And we'll be using that a little later as well. Then what you want to do is you want to put in a hole saw the size of your tubing. This is an inch and a quarter hole saw. I have inch and a quarter tubing. This just slides up and down like this. I have a uh, cordless drill right here that I use to just make this notch. And it's really quite simple. It goes pretty quickly and it does a pretty good job. So very little touch up needed at the end. Okay, so now that I have these attachment rails in, uh, they are not tacked down yet at all, and they're going to be floating. What I want to do is I want to put the tarp through and put a couple of bungees on. To, uh, I'll measure out. I know that it's three inches from the outside here to the edge of the tarp on the side, so I'm going to make it the same. So I'll put these tarps through. I'll pull them tight with a couple of bungees, and I'll measure out three inches to the outside here. And then I will tack these in place, and the tarp should fit really well. So let me go ahead and do that right now. And I'll show you once it's all together how it looks. Okay, now that I have the tarp looped through, as you can see, I come around this first tubing and come back. I put some bungees in here just to keep it tight and give me pretty close approximation of uh, where I need to put these support rails. Now, what's going to take place is we're going to use the ball bungees to go through this here and around here and back again to, to pull these tight. And so we want from the edge of the tarp here to the outside edge here, three inches. So I'll set those in place and then I'll put a mark over here so I can disassemble everything to weld it. I don't want any sparks burning holes in the tarp. So then we'll, once those are in, um, we should be um, good to go. I will probably put one more support tube across there just to keep it from flapping and help support everything. Now that we've got our canopy top all tacked up, uh, next thing is to put our supports on. So we have to go out to the boat and we have to measure uh, the distance across the boat, the width of the boat, where we're going to put our mounting plates for that. And then we're going to have to set the angle for where they attach to the canopies on the sides here. So let's go out to the boat and we'll take a measurement and then we'll calculate that for what we need in here. So we know our canopy is going to set out here in the edge, but our mounting plate is going to be in here. So you have to calculate this distance. So we're going to measure from the center of where our mounting plate is going to go there to the center of where it is going to go over here. So let's measure that out right now. So what I did was I measured inside over there to outside over here, and that gives us 67 inches, which will be center to center. So we know the outside of our canopy is 72 inches. So the inside center to center measurement is 67 inches. That's five inches. So we have to pitch everything two and a half inches to the outside. And that will connect with our canopy. Because it's such a slight pitch, I'm not going to bend the tubing straight and angle it over. It'll just, uh, it'll actually give a little bit more shoulder room inside pitching it out. So the next step uh, after we've got that dimension across the width of the boat is I'm taking an angle finder like this and I'm placing it right on the gunnel of the boat like that. And then what I did was it went forward on the boat and cranked down the trailer until that was on zero. Now the inside here, where we're going to be doing our mounting, is really at about, oh, three degrees. So we're going to have to compensate for that, but it's not going to be much, so we may not even have to do anything. Uh, it might just leave a little bit of a gap on one side, and the well will fill that in, so we're not going to worry about that. 
but this is what we needed to have. So with this at zero degrees, what I did was set the pipe where it would intersect inside here on this plane. And then what I did was I began to tilt the angle. I want to set this pipe at an angle like this because as it goes up, it goes back. And what I want to do is I want to catch as far back on the canopy as I can, but still have all this area open, as you can see, for fishing rods and stuff. I want to be able to drift for, for fish and fluke and troll and all that sitting in my uh, forward seats here. So what I've determined is 15 degrees to be an ideal angle. That will leave the canopy two feet hanging over that way towards the end, and it will bring it uh, just over forward of the windshield in the front here. So that's going to work out real well. Then the next one will go up at a steeper angle towards the middle like this. So this is the first one we're going to do, and I'm going to leave them a little long. Now I measured inside the boat in the gunnel, and it's two feet to the top here to the floor inside. So I'm six foot tall. I want a little clearance, so I'm going to make everything 50 inches. That's these tubes here. These will be 50 inches from the top here. I measured from there up, and I needed uh, 50 inches to give myself about an inch and a half clearance to walk underneath. You don't want to be hitting your head on this thing. So now that we have this angle, I'm going to leave them a little long. I'm going to set the uh, tubing uh, notcher at a 15 degree angle. And I'm going to cut this and leave it maybe 55 inches from there so that I can set it on the, the canopy frame inside the garage, get my angles and my pitch, and tack everything up. Then we can bring everything out here, put a mounting plate on, set everything on, and get it started to uh, fasten to the boat. Hey, you know, I know for a lot of you out there, you're watching this and you're seeing a lot of different, you know, angles and pitches and all this different stuff. But it's really not that complicated if you sit for a minute and think through it. And, uh, you know, these are really just to give you ideas of how you want to do your build. Uh, so the best thing I can tell you is just to continue to watch through the video. And at the end, as we get closer to the end, you'll begin to see how things fall together. And you go, oh, that really doesn't look as hard as it is. So anyway, just a little tip to, to keep you there and, and uh, keep you focused on what we're doing. So now that I've notched these out, there's one there, there's one over there, these are identical. I made these about 53 inches or 54 inches, somewhere in there, a little random from the, after I made the cut, I, I uh, determined that dimension. That way they're a little bit long. And so what I want to do now is I want to measure from the outside here up, and the easiest way to do that is just use a speed square like this. That way it stays square to the outside. And I'm going to come back and measure to the outside, 24 inches, which is right there. And now I'm going to place a mark. And I'm going to do that on the other side. That is going to be the uh, edge of the tubing. When I stand it up, I'm going to line it right on that edge. Now. The other thing I have to do is I have to get the pitch in this way. Uh, remember we needed 67 inches, uh, center of this pipe, the center of that pipe. So we got to make sure that it's equal and we're going to use the outside of the canopy frame on both sides. We're going to come in uh, two and a half inches. We're going to come in uh, from the outside though into the center of the pipe, two and a half inches on both sides. up from that measurement up about 50 inches. But to do that properly, I'm going to slide everything down. So let me do that and I'll show you how to get that measurement. I measured it in from the outside to the center two and a half, the outside here to center two and a half, and then I double checked the me measurement center to center at 50 inches and it's 67 inches which is what we need. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack on this uh, support rail across here. That'll keep everything lined up at the right angle. Then I'll just raise it up to 15 degrees and uh, then we can tack it to the rail and test everything. So now I've raised the bar up with the two tubes on it and that sets the pitch and the angle. Now I just put them on the two foot marks that are on each side here and then I take my angle finder like this and I set this at 15 degrees and that will line up everything to where I need to be 
I can tack it in place and then we can uh, give it a test run up on top of the boat see how it fits. Again, you always want to just tack everything and then you can go back and weld it later. Okay, so I've de already determined that this is level across the floor here this way. So what I want to do now is I want to cut these pipes off and I left them pretty close to about 50 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a level across here and I'm going to put the angle finder on there. And if you remember, our boat had a three degree pitch up at the windshield. So being this is the front, and it's upside down instead of pitching up I have to make the cut go down so what I'll do is put that at 50 inches which I have marked here I'll bring the level across pitch it down put another mark and then I will cut across those planes with a wafer wheel I'll do that on both sides and then we'll be ready to fasten the mounting plates to the boat and lift this up on top and get it all situated to get it tacked in so we can do the front supports so for the mounting plates where the main uh, two supports are going to go for the top. Uh, I put in a piece of 12 inch by two and a half by three eighths thick flat stock. I wanted it thick enough so it would disperse the weight across all of this. And for now I just drilled two quarter inch holes and ran in two number 10 screws right here just to hold it in place. Once I put everything on here and tack it up, I'll drill these holes bigger from the underside when I'm ready to mount. But I wanted it long enough so it wasn't a lot of stress on one part here in the boat. I wanted it to be able to um, be distributed like a pair of skis in snow. You'll ride up on top rather than push through. So now that this mount is in place, I'm going to add another one over there, uh, right next to the windshield in the same spot. I came up about an inch from the end here. I didn't want it on the edge for stress. And then I'm going to bolt these through from the other side underneath using a backing plate as well. Now, if you noticed in the video, I actually didn't get to talk much about these front supports and the bracing up here. I think it was because the battery died in my camera because I lost that footage. So let me go over them now and I'll share with you exactly how I built these and what I did and why I attached them the way I did. Now, what I wanted to do was I was originally going to attach them along the front here, but I thought it would look more stylish coming from the back and going back to the, the first um, tie down area for the tube that goes across for the tarp. And so what I did was I took some uh, three inch flat uh, round stock that I had and I cut it on my saw a half inch thick. Then I drilled three holes in it and I measured up um, in front of the windshield here from there to there um, so that I would have clearance for the door because the door swings this way. And it clears by about an inch here, three quarters of an inch here at the top. So I knew I had to come forward enough to clear that door. So that's something you may have to look at in your boat as well. Then what I did was I just took and I drilled um, quarter inch holes in the plate and then I took a number 10 screw and fastened them to the top. And that was all. I did the same thing on the other side. Then I took a piece of tubing and I cut it extra long. This is about five foot, 60 inches. And what I did was I notched that end on the, on the tubing and I stuck it up there and then I held it on the side here and marked it so it would be right about even with the flush 
portion of the, the top deck here. And then I went and cut that. Then I put it back up here into that tube again, slid it over till it touched here, and then marked the inside on this side. And then I took it and cut that. That allowed me to slide the tube over and set it down to place where I wanted it to be. Then from there I could tack it up. Then what I did was go up here and using a square off of that tube right there, I held the square down and over and moved it over until it was perfectly in line. That made me know that everything was square here. It wasn't tilted this way or that way and tack welded it. I did the same thing on the other side to repeat the process. And then I took these tubes here and I cut them at 20 inches long and I coped the 45 on each end, slid them up. And again, I used a measurement from that point to that point and that point to that point. So I know it would be at a 45 degree angle and attach those by tack welding those as well. So I did that on both sides. That keeps the top from racking this way or any way else. Now let me show you how I fasten these on the inside. I showed you before that I used these Allen bolts and you can see why I had to grind back some of the weld here that um, would accept those. And I didn't want to take too much of the weld off. So with the Allen bolts in there, what I did was I just took an Allen key in and when I went to tighten it underneath, it would just hit against the tubing here and stop. So I didn't have to have somebody hold it from the outside while I did the inside. Over here is how I fastened the back plate through as well. What I did was I took and originally remember I only drilled a quarter inch hole in here and ran a number 10 screw down there just to hold them in place while I tack welded them. Then what I did was when I took them off, I drilled from the other side a 7 16th hole to accept this 3 8 bolt. And I did that up that one and those as well. Let me show you how they're fastened from underneath. So here's the plate I have underneath here. Uh, for the one by the dash and if you notice I did use washers here as well and I also used locking nuts they have a nylon uh, lock in there so when you tighten them up I don't have to worry about them backing off now if you don't use nylon nuts lock nuts I would suggest you tighten it down then put another nut on top of the other one and tighten that down on top so they're against each other that will do the same thing but it's a whole lot easier working down in here to just use a locking nut. Let me show you what I did in the forward section. So what I did was come up forward of this cleat right here. I put a half inch plywood. I put caulk all around it first and then I pushed it on, under the bolts. Then I put the plate on the bottom and attached it again with lock nuts. And so that isn't going anywhere. The hull up here is a little thinner than the back by the windshield. The back by the windshield is a good quarter inch thick. Plus it has vertical and and across pieces so it's very sturdy back there but up here I wanted to go a little wider for flexing and stuff because if anything the tarp is going to pull up not push down so that's how that's mounted up front okay so what I've done is I've added this top piece here and that's going to be for rocket launchers for the boat and this can be random anywhere I've made this about 54 inches about four and a half feet and uh, that way I've centered it Came in the equal amount from the outside to here on each end and I've tack welded now I'm going to go ahead and weld that up and then we're going to mount on our two inch by inch and a half pieces of pipe here and here and make our uh, inch and a half PVC sleeves for that. So now that I have the two inch pipes cut an inch and a half long what I want to do is is take off all the burrs on the outside and the inside. I've already gone over to my one inch belt sander and I've taken off the outside now I want to do the inside and for that I'm going to use this handy little deburring tool you can pick these up at Harbor Freight or uh, actually I think it's Home Depot one of the big box stores should have them um, and they work really well they have a little hook blade on the end and all you do is you set it down like this just bring it around the inside and you're all done Okay, I've got this on end now, and this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the rocket launcher area in here for our rod holders. And so I've got our two inch by inch and a half pipe right here, and we're going to mount them right on here, one here and one here. And then there'll be a PVC sleeve that goes in that that holds our rods in place. The reason I'm using PVC is so it doesn't damage up the rods or the real seats, uh, the real stems on there. Uh, this could wear and cut into it so by putting PVC in there and it's easily replaceable 
So before we mount these, next thing I want to do is drill a hole right here to accept the quarter inch uh, bolt. And that's going to be our stop for our rods so they don't drop through the bottom if I have longer rods and you hit your head on them. So everything will end right here. So let me go over to drill press and I'll drill these out and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I've got the hole drilled in here and this is only going to be for the bottom one that will be down here. And so uh, that is to have a through bolt that goes through, holds the sleeve in place, and it also keeps the rods from dropping down through. So uh, once the, the sleeves are in, I'll drill through the PVC, put a nut on the inside, and run the, the bolt through all the way. I won't have it come out this side, just far enough to where the rod doesn't drop through. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to build a jig to put these sleeves in place like this. And so what I'm going to do is use a piece of PVC pipe. That'll keep everything in line so it doesn't twist this way, that way, and I know everything will be perfect. So I'll first mark everything out here but to set everything, but what I need to do is get that PVC pipe cut. So what I want is I want a center to center dimension. So I get that by just going to the top to the top or the bottom to the bottom. It'll give you the same dimension. I got 10 and 3 quarters on this one. So now what I want to do, that's the center of this pipe. So what I want to do, these are inch and a half. So I need to add 3 quarters for this one up and 3 quarters for that one down or an inch and a half. So what we got here then is we got 10 and 3 quarters. So we're going to be at 12 and a quarter. So I'll cut a piece of PVC pipe, 12 and a quarter, and then I'll show you how that clamps on here and how it sets everything in place. Okay, so here's the sleeve that we have. So all I'm going to do is put one pipe on here and bring it right to the end like that. Just put a spring clamp on it just to hold it in place. Now this one here, because I want to make sure the hole is lined up, I'm going to just take a magic marker and I'm going to just draw a little line right here like this where the hole is so that I can see it on top when the spring clamp covers the hole and it's important that they're clamped on the same side you don't want one clamped on the side one clamped on the top you want them clamped together so this one is on the top here and so now what I want to do is put this one on the top and bring it to the end flush just like that put the clamp on there there we go now I can line that line up um, on top and I'll know that the hole is lined up on top it's not to the side one way or the other so I've gone ahead and I've marked these out I came from the center and then I went four and a half inches and four and a half inches now these are going to be spaced at nine inches apart and so what I have to do is just hold it on the, the line I can look at the line and just estimate it I can also put a line down here and hold it from the side and then the main dimension I want is forward or back, which way I want it this way, just so it's centered like that. And then all I have to do is put a tack weld on there. I can slide the sleeve out. That way everything's lined up and I can just con continue along. Okay, with the uh, top all done, welded, rocket launchers on, everything all set. I've cleaned up everything, welds, holes, everything. Um, now it's a matter of just Give it a coat of spray paint and while that paint's drying I'll work on the uh, sleeves for the rocket launchers. So before I mount this it'll be easier to work on the uh, rod sleeves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a rough measurement. I'm going to leave them a little longer and then I'll mark each one separately in case there's a slight fluctuation and difference so that they're pretty pretty close. So all I want to do is I want to go inside, hook on the bottom there and I get um, 12 and 3 sixteenths in there. Double check this one. And same thing, 12 and 3 sixteenths. So I'm going to leave them about an inch long. I'll put, actually, I'll cut them like 13 and a half, and then I can trim off the bottoms later. So I'm going to cut them at 13 and a half, then I'm going to flare each end, drop them in, mark the bottom with a pencil, and cut them off. So let's go ahead inside, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I've just set up a stop block here, measured out 13 and a half inches, put a board there and clamped it on the end so I don't have to measure. I'm going to be doing six of these and I'll just line them up and cut them. Okay, for the next step, all you're going to need is some kind of bottle like this. This happens to be a used wine bottle and 
you'll need a heat gun just like this one it's a cheap harbor freight one and your pieces of pipe like this all you're going to do is you're going to heat the end press it down over the wine bottle and what that's going to do is going to create a flare in the end I'll show you just how easy it is you don't want to heat these too hot that they get brown and burn you just want to heat them up so keep turning the pipe like i'm doing right here the other thing is you'll see there's writing on here don't worry about the writing or any other marks on here, the blackness or whatever, you can easily clean that up with clear primer clean and pipe cleaner. Those uh, markings and those lines will come right off as soon as you hit it with it. So we want this to want to get a little bit on the inside too. Want to make sure it gets nice and hot. But again, you don't want to burn this. You just want it pliable. You can see when the ends start to curl a little bit that it's ready. You see how easy that just pressed on there? Now you're going to want to hold it there until it cools. And then that will give you a nice flange in order to drop your rods in. Also keep, um, keep it centered on the pipe sleeves on the uh, frame and uh, give us plenty of time to set our bolts and make sure everything is even on one end. So. A couple more seconds, we should be good to go. There you go. Does a really nice job. So, five more to go, and then uh, we'll uh, get ready to start mounting them. All right, with everything fabricated now, what I have to do is I have to make some backing plates like this. I make them for both where it mounts to the, the, just below the dash and inside the windshield, and also here, out towards the bow. And so what I've done is I've just taken uh, some 4 inch plate by 3 16 thick and I've held it up here. First I checked for clearances under the boat, make sure I wasn't going to hit any cleats or anything like that. And I just lined it up like this, took some spray paint, spray painted through the holes and that left me some marks that I could center punch and then drill out. Uh, I drilled out just slightly bigger than these uh, Allen <coughs> bolts right here. So now I'm just checking to make sure everything lines up and I'll just put them through. You want to do this now rather than when you get in under the boat. So that looks like a good fit. Everything's good to go. So now all we have to do is set the top on and I can bolt everything through from underneath. I also made these plates here. Uh, I've got to paint them fully and I'll paint these as well. These go uh, the under plates for the windshield mount so let's get these painted up and then uh, maybe we can set this top one of the things you might notice is i'm using allen bolts here for the front mount because the wells are so close to the hole what i did was grind back just a little bit and that gives me clearance for these heads to fit uh, if i use the hex head it would uh, be too close to the well and have to grind back too much but these because they're round they fit right in there perfectly so in addition to the backing plates that i have here I am also going to add a filler of three quarter inch plywood and uh, what I've done is just laid it on top, spray painted the holes again and drilled them out. And the reason for this sandwich type of thing is because uh, I didn't want to put this metal directly underneath the deck um, where this would be rubbing on fiberglass, you know, as you're hitting waves and stuff. This will give it a little more cushion and a little less uh, uh, opportunity to wear on the fiberglass. It also uh, gives me a little more thickness, so I don't have to run the, uh, the nuts up on the bolts as far either. And I am going to seal this up, uh, putting some silicone on there or some caulking and put it up underneath so no water can leak through or get into the, the wood here underneath the deck. Here's a little bit of close-up of how I fastened the uh, rocket launchers from the back. This is just a quarter inch all thread bolt and again I used a locking nut on here. I went up inside from the back here and I uh, drilled this hole originally, remember? Then I drilled through the PVC, put that in, you have to use the open end side of the wrench and you just stay on that nut while you tighten it down with uh, a drill driver. So I've done all those and as you can see the tops 
they have a nice rounded bell on them to accept the rods. So to fasten the top on here, all they need to do is just feed it through the front and the back of the frame, like over there. And then I just take these bungee balls. I'll leave a list in the description below where I got these on Amazon. I come up from the bottom, I take it over the top, I pull it tight, and I just snap it around. And that's it. I haven't even added any other further grommets in this. I, uh, they're all in here. This tarp is nice and tight. It's like a drum. And uh, you could probably even trailer it a short distance. Well, I wouldn't take it on the highway. But that gives you an idea just how easy it is to hook this up. This tarp comes on and off in just a couple of minutes. I can stow it under my cutty and I'm good to go. Here's the finished supports. This is a 15 degree angle and this is about a 10 degree angle. And what I did was I put this support plate in here too as well, just to give it a little more rigidity. The uh, tubing brace is not in my way at all when I'm standing up driving the boat. And I've got about four inches of clearance above my head with everything. So anyway, that's the tarp. We're going to take it down, put it in the water, and give it a little test run and see where we got. So I did notice that while traveling, if you're going about 40, 45, the tarp has a tendency in the very back to catch some wind. So the best way I found out, I think, to do is just take the tarp off. It only takes a few minutes and then put it back on when you get to the launch. You'll save yourself a little bit of aggravation and it's probably a whole lot of time. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you got something out of it. Maybe you picked up some ideas, some tips, maybe some tricks of building things so you can build your own soft or hard top for your boat. And I hope it will be a real benefit to you in doing so. You know, let me just leave you with this thought. And that is, each one of us has an ability far above anything else. And that is the ability to create. You know, whether you're cooking, or you're painting, crocheting, you know, working on cars or building things, we were instilled with inside of us the ability to create things. And that, I believe, is because we were made in the image of God, who is the creator of everything. And on top of that, he also instilled with us the ability to have emotion, the ability to love, the ability to know right and wrong. And that lines us up with the opportunity, if we so choose to have it, to know him personally. We're the only thing in God's creation that has the ability to know him personally. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but God longs to have a relationship with you and longs to have a relationship with me. In fact, it says in the Bible how much it is that he loves us. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. That's you and me. But you know, that word believe is kind of key to the whole thing. And that word doesn't just, that ah, I believe it and go on your way. It means to actually take action to. Uh, when you believe something, you believe it to the point of putting your faith in it and making it a part of your life. You know, when you sit down in a chair, you have faith that that chair is going to hold you. You believe it. When you get in a car and you go downtown, when you put your foot on the brake, you expect that car to stop because you have faith in it. And in doing so, you put your life at risk because of your faith. What God asks is for us to trust him in the same way. By putting our faith in the work of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross and saving us and walking with him, God can not only forgive you of your sins, but he can change your life and he can bring you in a right relationship with him. You know, if you're not sure how to take those steps, I'd really encourage you to just check out my book. It's in the description below. It's free. It doesn't require your email or anything else to capture. And all you have to do is just uh, click on it. You can start reading right away. But in it, I walk you through a little bit about my life before I knew Christ and after. And also 
some key scripture verses to show you how you can come into a right relationship with God and also how you can walk with him on a daily basis. So guys, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us again, for all your support, your comments, all that you do to help build this channel. We really appreciate it. So until the next time, I want you to always remember that God loves you more than you could ever know. So until then, make sure you get outdoors and God bless you.